So guys, back to the ground. We are back with some not so berry. And I am still grinding out Clem. We completed her public enemy aspiration last episode. But one thing I am kind of waiting on is getting to level 10 of her career. She's currently level 8. She is the boss, but she ain't the brains. So we need to get her working on that. I need to get her upgrading objects. I have, thanks to you guys recommending this, I've unlocked the entrepreneurial trait. That's a reward for trait from the store. So she does have a much higher chance of getting promoted. So I'm gonna keep grinding her out this episode. I'm hoping to get another promotion today. Maybe even back-to-back -back promotions if I zoom through things a little bit faster because I've got work on Saturday and Sunday. Today is Thursday, so I'm just saying this could work out very well for us. Blossom has just finished work. She did a great job. She got $56. And you can now make plugins. Oh, you're at work. Oh, okay. So Kieran is at work right now. These two have school today as well. So we realized last episode, Blossom. Blossom kind of, the hormones just went wild and she fell in love with half of the school. Honestly, relatable. I love that. When she realized she was having crushes, she was having them left, right, and center. We met Annabelle last episode and we tried. We tried very, very hard with Annabelle. She's clearly clearly quite into her. She finds her attractive. It's not showing on here, which is a little bit frustrating, but she does find her very attractive. Annabelle, however, <laughs> I don't know if she just likes being chased. I don't know if that's her thing, but we were trying very, very hard to chase Annabelle and it wasn't really happening, was it? Like I was all over her coming and sitting next to her. She kept running away. She kept disappearing. She didn't want to be um, really that close to me. So I'm kind of feeling like she's, <sighs> she's not really committing. She's doing a little bit of uh, what was the girl that did it? to Rose, was it? No, who did that? Someone has done that in the series before. We've definitely had that experience before with another Sim blowing super hot and cold with our Sim. And it's kind of happening a bit again with Blossom. So I'm just gonna... You know, I, I enjoyed it. It was fun. We got some flirts out the way, but we're feeling a little bit hurt by the fact that, um, oh, she's still got her flag on from the thumbnail. I'm gonna leave it on. It's cute. I'm feeling a little bit hurt by the fact that I'm doing all the chasing and she doesn't seem that bothered. The other spanner just thrown into the works there as well is that when Coral saw, where's she gone? Where's she gone? Where's she gone? And oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I've just had a text. Hey, babe. Wanna have a quick woo? What? Who are you? That's no, no, no. Jonathan. Okay, Jonathan, we are immediately ruling out because that is no hate that hate that so so much but yeah coral when he saw annabelle was like heart stopping he even had a floaty dream about her he was utterly obsessed very huge crush a huge huge crush he had on annabelle which i don't think blossom would love if she knew but you know what coral's like he's never about to do anything that could potentially hurt his sister so i think he's gonna be keeping this crush very under wraps it kind of suits him because he isn't flirty so even if he uh um, did like want to approach her he'd probably be doing it really awkwardly he doesn't really know how to flirt with other people he doesn't like flirting with other people he finds the whole thing very awkward and strange he watches Blossom do it at school and he's like eh don't understand how you're doing that whereas Blossom loves flirting but we're already starting to see that we're getting a bit of unrequented unrequited love I never really know how to say that word but it's, it's a bit of that happening already which is great because both of their storylines is fitting both of them I am very very happy about things and Coral just got the results of his SDT SDT what? Success Test determination test. His scores aren't quite high enough as he hoped they would be. Should he sign up for a retake or just be happy? I mean, this is Coral. He's smart. He's driven. He focuses a lot on his schoolwork. So I feel like we'll do a little retake of that test. Oh, performance loss medium. His next test score was even lower. <gasps> and now Blossom's got hers as well. Okay, let's try both approaches. Coral is a retaker. Blossom is an acceptor. How does it work out for her? If she had only worked hard, if she'd only tried again, she could have achieved test taken perfection. Everyone knows that the perfection is totally achievable goal and sell for anything less than is shameful. So what, they both got such from that? No, I hate that. Now she's stressed. She's stressed from wanting to be a total perfectionist. Oh no. And Coral is sad because he's got a low ST, ST, SDT. They did that on purpose. You can't tell me they didn't do that on purpose. Clem, I need you to upgrade some bits and bobs. So why don't we have a go at upgrading this? Oh, and you've woken up tense. You need some junk food in your life. Okay, go ahead and get yourself a nice tikka masala pizza, okay? Settle those junk food cravings. And um, we'll have a little bubble bath while we wait. The other thing I said that is because I finished the public enemy aspiration, I should look for a new aspiration. Some of you guys are saying food, but other of you guys actually, uh, some of you said the hidden grilled cheese aspiration as well. But some of you guys remembered that I really wanted when Clem was younger and she was a pirate ship, on the pirate ship, that I thought it would be really cool to move her to Solani one day. I haven't forgotten about that. I still really want her to do that. So I was kind of thinking that we could give her 
the beach life aspiration. One, because I feel like she would love that. She would love just nothing more than relaxing on the beach and achieving what she already set out for in her life, which is to become a pirate, a relaxing pirate. But also I think a nice little way for her to redeem herself is one should be like taking her kids to live in Solani, which for me would be like massive parenting win because you're living on a beach. But two, if we try to help Solani, because in this save, Solani is still like polluted and all of that kind of thing. So maybe she can try and help fix the island a little bit while she's there. And that could be a little bit of a way that after a life of crime, she's actually given back to the world a little bit. So I think that could be really nice. I'm going to give her the beach life aspiration. Of course, we're not going to be able to do much of it for now because uh, we are still living in the city. I can make her leave this apartment now that she's a young adult. I don't want to do it until I finish the crime career because I don't feel like I can successfully run my crime career from Solani until I'm at the very top of the chain, you know? Tyler's calling to chat. My pizza's still not here though. Why do pizzas and sims, why do they do this? They just never arrive. And the usual gang is all here. We've got Dada, Camille, and Tessa. All just, they love turning up at the house. Oh, you're sad again? Oh my gosh, I can't keep up with you and your sadness. Uh, but Coral has returned from school. He's one of the top students in Buckingham High. Keep up the good work. <gasps> and so is Blossom. Clever little googie eggs. I mean, you're stressed out your minds, but you are the top students, which I absolutely love. Well done, gang. Keenan has kind of taken over a bit of cooking in the house because he's like, there's only so many chocolate souffles I can eat. They're not even good ones. You're meant to be great at chocolate souffles. What the hell? There's only so much baked treats we can eat before I'm literally worried the kids are gonna have like scurvy or something, which although very piratey, not ideal. So he started making a bit of food for them. So they're at least not gonna be eating just baked treats going forward. And Coral has his lifeguard work in an hour. I feel like currently he's just working at like a pool somewhere in the city. I feel like he's he's got like a savior personality type. So I feel like being a lifeguard fits him perfectly. But if they did move to Solani, it would be easy. Even more perfect. And he's also just had a call saying the drop off has been made. Don't be late. Wait, wait, what? What, what, what? Ha ha, you just got pranked. Who just pranked me? People need to stop doing that when my parents are criminals. Do you have any idea what that freaks him out? Look at him. Look how tense my boy is. Oh, and we just got some juicy gossip from whoever this is at school. Okay. August. You seem to be getting quite popular, honestly. From having a childhood where you really struggled to make friends, you're now chit chat with people all the time on the phone. However, what I actually need from you babes is postcards. And you guys recommended getting a note board. So let me get the notice board for them. Curate a cork board. That's the one. Okay. But it already has stuff on it. Can I definitely still put things on? Oh, it's this one. It's this one. It's this one. My bad. Okay. So if I put that on, I can like keep track of how everyone's doing. Oh, perfect. Oh, I love this. I'll still try and keep them to the side so we can work out who's like collected the most. Because I think so far, Blossom's on four, whereas Coral is only on two. One from Little Haven, one from Sunset Valley. Whereas we've got Appaloosa Plains, uh, Twinbrook, Riverview, and Midnight Hollow. In fact, let's go ahead and check the post, see if there's any more. And then let's see if we can grab some more from our friendos too. I feel like Blossom like writes to a bunch of people and like finds it really easy. Whereas Coral, like Coral, Coral, like writes like really long detailed letters and like deletes it and then writes it again and then deletes it and like he's a bit more perfectionist. That's why it's taken him a little bit longer. Are they new postcards or not? Barnacle Bay. Oh, this one's new. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Who's this Barnacle Bay? I feel like this is one of his. Okay, perfect. Well done. You got an extra one. So I will pop this on his side. And then this one is from Twinbrook. I feel like I've already got Twinbrook. Yeah, I already got Twinbrook. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, and he's super stressed. I'm bored at work, bless him. Okay, I'm gonna send you, Clem, to go to work on off hours so we can increase our work performance. And then, Keenan, would you mind helping out Blossom? <laughs> Would you mind helping Blossom with her homework? I literally feel like she's gonna be like, yeah, okay. Okay, thanks so much, Dad. And then the minute he leaves the room, she's just gonna pull it out, screw it up and put it in the bin and start again. But like, I really appreciate that he tried to help in his pants that he's been in all day long gaming. And that's more or less all he's done today, let's face it. Clem and Ty are here so often that I'm like, they literally feel like they've got to keep an eye. They've got to check in because uh, even Tessa, even Tessa checking in because they are wrecks. I feel like they've got good hearts, like they mean well, but they are complete wrecks. And the family know it. They're here for them. They're looking after them. They're trying, bless them. I feel like they just avoid this room with the <laughs> bags of cash and gold. And not you, Tessa, apparently. And a stolen ATM machine. Their pride and joy. Their favorite objects in the whole world. Owen's oh, highs come to help with the homework as well. That, that's good. That's very helpful. Keenan, 
God love him. He's a beautiful Egypt. That's basically his thing. Not great at homework. Coral earned $132, but performed poorly at work. It's because I got him to just like play swimming all day because his fun was so low that I'm like, I'm not going to be able to get him to do his homework otherwise. So go ahead and do your homework and you get in. And before I send him to bed, I'm going to get him to start like blogging. I'm gonna get him to start blogging about his feelings because he's like a tense little googie egg but he's good at writing. I don't know. I just feel like it would be a good outlet for him, I guess. I can imagine him having a tumbler, but like a secret tumbler that he like never tells any of his family about. It just, he gives me those vibes so. And oh, we've got sed sed shared sadness. Who's sad? No, it's like Keenan. It's actually not for once. I don't know where he's getting this from, but I guess it's from somebody one of his online friends is maybe feeling sad. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like he's building up a lot of online friendships. I really want him to write a post or get a postcard from Solani. I don't know if it's an option, but I think it would be nice if maybe he like made a connection with somebody from there before he ever got to there. And then maybe when we get to Solani, we could try and meet them. I think that would be really cool. Oh my gosh. And I've let her sleep in through her job. <gasps> I'm so sorry, Blossom. Another day, another chance for you to meet your coffee shop prince or princess. She is still writing that novel, by the way. It takes a while to write a novel. So I'm going to keep socializing with my coworkers, seeing if I can meet anyone. I don't even know if you can meet like people at part-time jobs. Oh, it's Jonathan. Okay. Jonathan, who was like, do you want a Netflix and chill? It's Netflix and chill, Jonathan. Okay. Great, 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 great. Why him? I do not know. I'm not gonna pursue romance with somebody that just called me in the middle of the day and asked if I wanted to go around and woo-woo. That's not gonna happen, so no to that. <gasps> oh, and Coral's going through a phase. He hates easy listening music and he's having a bit of a mean streak and feels like being nasty with other Sims. Oh no. Oh, Coral, I don't think feel like you've got it in you to have a mean streak, to be honest. But you're definitely feeling a little bit vexed at the world right now. Maybe it's because you're meant to be the creative one, yet it's Blossom that's finding all the time to write her novel since she starts early in the day at her job and you've got to work evenings. So Coffee Shop Prince is actually going a lot further ahead than... What's his book called again? I can't remember his. Is it The Cursed Siblings? The Cursed Children. Yeah, The Cursed Children is very far behind. So I don't feels a bit vexed about that. He might feel as well a little bit vexed about the fact that, um, oh, hello, Jacob. No, don't skip school. Get your butt into school, young lady. <gasps> and now she's having a face too. <gasps> she's, oh, will often pick up an instrument at any chance she gets, yell off and turn all the radios up to 11. Both my teenagers are going through phases. Great. But yeah, I feel like he might also be vexed about like the fact that Blossom seems to find it so easily romantically with other Sims. Whereas the one girl that he's actually interested in is the girl that Blossom's dating so obviously he's not going to go anywhere near that because he's a good brother. And then I don't really know why Blossom's feeling so vexed and like she needs a musical instrument. Maybe it's because her coffee shop prince is a complete sleazeball. That would probably do it for me. Or maybe it's the fact that we still got rats in the house all the time despite the fact that we have Two cats. This feels very wrong. Can I train these cats to hunt? I think even the cats are stressed about the mice. Everyone in the hum family is just stressed about the mice. Oh, the cats are so cute with each other though. They do little like cleans of each other's faces and stuff every now and again, just being very baby. I feel like Keenan's the kind of person that would meow at cats to communicate with them. I just know he would. And Coral tried to skip out school today to comfort a crying friend. Oh, this is so Coral. I love it. However, they've rung Clem about this. Friends comes first. Next time, tell the teacher. Or don't skip class. Well, she's not going to say education is vital. I actually think, you know, the Perry Egypt, she started up a whole group to, you know, further her friendship with her friends. She did bully them into getting tattoos and piercings, but that's neither here nor there. I think helping friends comes first because she doesn't think education is vital. She definitely doesn't think on telling teachers. I think this one. So there we go. A good teaching moment. But we are no longer responsible, so that's great. Oh, and it's straight back in again because he's a little brainy baby. Okay, so it's another day, another time spending the whole day playing video games. He's definitely addicted at this point. I'm going to try and at least get some money out of it because you've got to be better at this point, right? You've got to be better. Go into a tournament. And Clem, I am going to once again send you to go to work on your off hours so we can increase our job performance. I am definitely trying very, very hard to get the whole of her aspiration complete today. Oh, and this is sanitary. Oh, yay. Love that. Oh, where did you just go? Oh, okay. Ooh, and roses are red. Violets are blue. Blossom was caught flirting with Jacob at school. Jacob looks like a prefect. Also Lexi, but we got the friendship with Jacob. Kind of tempted to try this again. Oh, and also this girl here. Uh, who are you? Jamie as well. <gasps> and Leon. Okay, let's... <laughs> Let's listen to teacher for a bit. Leon, we don't have that much friendship with. Jamie and Jacob though, both of these guys. I might have to invite them round and see, see them up. 
And Keenan came second in the tournament and actually earned $600. Clever, pooky head. Should Blossom invite over classmate Jonathan? No, he's the wreck. Don't you dare. Don't you dare invite him over. But I am gonna suggest, why don't we go bowling? And we'll we'll force Coral to come too. Coral, let's go bowling, because you're very bored. I know you, I literally feel like she's having to drag him along to this. But we'll invite along Jamie and Jacob too. He's tense and he's feeling really down. So we shall see. Okay, I'm sure that there is a, uh, oh, Coral's got work in an hour. Awkward. Um, okay. I'm sure there's a bowling alley somewhere. I've been bowling before, right? Maybe I just literally hallucinated this. Because I can't see any bowling. Yeah, I think this was a pipe dream, if I'm being honest. However, what I did notice in Oasis Springs is there is this bar here, the Oasis Springs Dust Bowl. Teen neighborhood lot right? And it's actually right opposite where Saffron lived. So I thought this could be quite nostalgic. So let's go there. And, oh, we are tense. Oh! Dust bowl. Bowl. Bowling. I get it. I get it now. Okay, great, 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 great. We're gonna have to try and bully Coral, Coral into sticking with us and playing some bowling whilst also skipping out on work. Oh my gosh, whilst also being really gross. Uh, do you mind going upstairs and washing your hands 10,000 times? And okay, where is Jacob? She's super into Jacob. Okay, okay, okay. Jacob also be smiling over, wait a minute. Jonathan, who invited you? Why are you here? No, Jonathan, absolutely not, no. So this is Jamie. Who has an elf here. Wait, didn't I see you last episode? Maybe I did. Oh no, I feel like Jacob's into Jamie. Since you've got the romance with Jacob, I'm gonna just nip in real quick and uh, edit a bit of Jacob. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a little bit of skin details. He's called Jacob Kalani and he has the beach life aspiration. So he wants to live in Solani, which you know, we may be moving to soon. Interesting. Okay, so I've made his nose a little bit bigger because he had the very narrow nose. And he's a townie, so <laughs> I can do what I like with him. Uh, and his eyes are kind of intense. Uh, they're very open. So I'm just gonna like make his eyes a bit more schmizy and a bit less, uh, I, I don't know. Kind of, they were freaking me out, not gonna lie. Gonna thicken up the old brows a little bit. Change up his hair a tad. Realize I'm not on daily outfits, so I have to find the hair all over again. <gasps> Actually, this hair looks really cute. Okay, we're going for this hair instead. If after doing all these edits, she's now like, I don't find him attractive anymore. I am actually just going to scream. But here is how he looks in game after his edits. I like the long hair more. Actually, I wish I'd have put that on all outfits, but it's still cute. Coral's off to go wash his hands 10,000 times to get his hygiene back. And ooh, 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 what's this, what's this? Hear rumors from Jacob. Oh my gosh. I forgot that flirting as teenagers is kind of just literally 90% nonsense, isn't it? <gasps> Look at the bowling shoes. <laughs> Why? Why, why don't you get bowling shoes? Yours are like cute bowling shoes. Oh, she's super into him. Is he as into us as we are into him though? No, he's not flirty. So he's not getting the breathtaking encounter at least. I like that he's got like a perceived as extremely attractive. I like that he's got the jumper on and he looks like a, a prefect. I feel like going for like a smart one is, is a really nice. Oh no, we don't want to go to Spice Festival, Kami. We're, we're on kind of a date. Thing? I don't know. Yeah, I like that she's going for smart ones. I like that a lot. Okay, but let's see what he's like at bowling because this is the ultimate decider. He's trash! We love that for him because he's relatable. Bowling is really hard. And Coral is genuinely having the time of his life. <laughs> Literally the time of his life. He's like, I'm loving being surrounded by flirty people flirting. This is definitely what I want to do on my free time on a Friday. Not continue writing the cursed children. Yeah, he's definitely not enjoying this one bit. Oh, wow. You're getting very fancy though. Oh my gosh. Why are you stomping your feet? You just got a strike. That was amazing. Okay, Coral. Coral, it's your shot. Let's see what you're like. Is it worth missing work for? He's a natural at it. We knew that was gonna be the case. We knew. Now he's got a little smile on his face. Yes, little cutie pie. And oh my gosh, I feel at this point, Camila's worrying about us a bit too much. You've gotta let us do teen stuff and be teens, okay? Oh, and it's moonlight bowling hours. Bowling looks really cool when it looks like this. I love it. We did definitely go here with somebody. Was it with Scarlett? Did I come here with my last set of twins as well? I sort of feel like maybe I did. Oh, and just when we're having a bit of time with the bro and he's actually got a smile on his face, it's straight back to flirty vibe again. Oh, but whatever Jacob showed her that was funny is also showing to Coral. He wants Coral to not feel left out, which is real nice. I'm gonna have Coral do a little... Can I get him to do a little scope? I mean, it doesn't really matter what you're thinking. You're probably not gonna speak to anyone because you just don't 
you're not flirty, but I feel like he's not flirty, not because he's not, like, not interested in people. Okay, he's interested in Brittany and Talia as well. Two more teens from his school that he's interested in. But I feel like even if he's interested and he's literally bawling at the side of them, he's not even gonna approach them. He's not gonna talk to them. He's not gonna try anything because he's just like, he doesn't like it. The whole thing just like freaks him out a little bit. Does not like it at all. He'd much rather like write about romance and try and work his feelings out that way than actually do any romance. <gasps> and look at this, witnessing cross act. Coral just witnessed two sims going at it in public. Is there no such thing as sanctity anymore? He doesn't like watching Blossom flirt with Jacob. Even if Jacob, oh, Blossom won the game though. Good job, Blossom. Even if Jacob seems like a nice guy, like he's not interested in watching his sister flirt. Not one bit, which I can totally get. I would not like watching my brother flirt, no offense, Dane. And uh, I'm not even an unflirty sim. Okay, so things have gone pretty, pretty nicely between these two. This seems a little bit more, even though we do have more romance with um, Annabelle, I don't feel like Jacob's constantly trying to run away, which is nice because uh, Annabelle didn't seem as interested. I also I also like the fact that he literally looks like a prefect. I think that's very cute. I'm gonna try and do all the same romancy stuff that I tried with um, Annabelle. We're pretty good as well at our writing, so I'm gonna try and drop some love poetry on him. Combining two of my skills together. Does he like it or does he find it cringe? That is the thing. He likes it! Okay, he likes it a lot. That is sweet. He also says he dislikes the color green, which is a revelation because he's wearing it. Oh, and the lights are on. That means it's time to go home, I'm afraid. Time to go home. They switch the lights on. They want to kick you all out. Yeah, he really hates the color green. Okay, I mean, it's my favorite color. Feel a little bit attacked there. At least we've learned a little bit more about him. She is, however, literally about to collapse from tiredness. I'm gonna send her home. And I'm intrigued to know how you guys feel about the little uh, comparison of the two love lives there. Which one of uh, Blossom's two current crushes do you guys like the most? I want to hear. Before you go to bed, oh, what's going on there? Do you not know? Disturbing. Please can you check for pen pal pals before you go to bed? Because I feel like this one's going to take us a while, so we've got to get on it. Coral, who did not have a good time. <laughs> Did not have a good time at all, but at least has met Jacob. Jacob Kalani. I'm gonna finally give him his little bath and then get him to check for pen pals before he goes to sleep as well. And it's finally the weekend, which means no more early mornings for Blossom and also work for Clem, which I'm really excited about. I've had a revelation or... or <laughs> Keenan has had a revelation overnight that he's got work withdrawals, but it's actually not from being a digi thief. I feel like he's gonna say, Clem, my calling, I realize now, my calling isn't crime. It is to become a pro gamer. He is gonna take the, the pro gamer move and quit his job to become a, he's just gonna play tournaments on this mat all day. I feel like it's his calling. Oh, he feels like it's his calling. I feel like it's something he would definitely do. And oh my gosh, literally as I say this nonsense, <laughs> Coral is like, I'm not sure what I want to be when I grow up. I feel like literally you've caught Keenan on a day where he is gonna be like, pick something you like. For me, it's Blicker Block. It's different for everyone, but for me, I pick Blicker Block. So I would pick something that you like, okay? Which is the complete opposite to the advice that um Clem gave him, which was basically business, you know, family business. You should go into the family business. And then I'm gonna go ahead and have Keenan quit his job. And then I'm gonna also have to pay for him to get the lifestyle cleansing too, because otherwise he's just gonna be vexed. Yes, quit your job as a digi thief. Oh, look at you. You're so tense. You're so jobless, but don't worry. Don't even worry. Go to the lifestyle coach and then you are on the track to becoming a pro gamer. Coral, get off that. That is now a piece of work equipment and you can't just go on it all willy nilly, okay? Oh, and the dead body's smelling in the hallway. Great. For breakfast, the kids have some tuna, surprisingly healthy, cooked by Clem, but she did leave it out all night, so um, good luck with that. And they are honestly feeling very, very tense. The rats out, the body's stinking. I'm kind of feeling like we should probably get out of the house today. The fact is we have laptops we can take with us anywhere in the world. It's grim in the city, but maybe if we got out of the city with our laptops and did a bit of writing outside the house, that could be a whole vibe. Oh, and as predicted, Coral is now feeling sick from eating bad sushi. Keenan's starting his new job as a um, professional gamer in his pajamas. Honestly, he's kind of living the dream, not gonna lie. And Coral, I'm gonna make you pop your little laptop in your inventory. What do you blog about feeling? before you leave for work. Blah, blah, blah about how you feel sick from your stupid sushi. Oh no. <laughs> and his dreams have been cut short. Oh, Keenan, you poor thing. So it's raining in the city. 
I hate to go back to the same neighborhood, but I feel like always the springs tends to have better weather. So I figured we should go to the park here. I brought the carts too. Oh, it's cloudy here as well. But at least it's hot. I brought the carts because I figured that they probably want some time away from the house as well. And look, he seems so much happier. The cleaner instantly after being out the house and after being out the city seems so much better. And I figured we can just like grab a bench somewhere, set up our laptops and work in nature. Write our books together in nature. Because just because they're feeling a bit angry at the world right now doesn't mean they're feeling angry at each other. Look, the tenseness from the rat and the dead body, it's just disappearing as we speak. No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> you again? One, how are you still alive? Two, how, first of all, how dare you steal poor Coral's laptop like that? That is so rude. So listen to those little burbs singing. How relaxing is this? Just out in the park, working on our novels. Who is Saj? Oh, of course, it's Keenan. It is, of course, Keenan. And you're feeling tense. Okay, can you guys, like, look after yourselves or something? Care for yourselves. Sort yourselves out, please. Because the twins are out here having a beautiful, relaxing time. Out in the world, away from the city. I don't feel like they're city folks at all. So I feel like this nature is probably making them... Okay, maybe not so much blossom. You're having a bit of a stressful time. Oh, it's from the bad food. Fair enough. Fair enough. Bad sushi for breakfast has just made everybody Saj. <gasps> Hot daydreaming. Blossom's head remembers Jacob Kalani fondly as memories of him begin to populate their mind. The task at hand is just an afterthought of the qualities of Jacob manifest himself as strong echoes that bring Blossom intense amounts of joy. So she's not thinking about the coffee prince. She's thinking about Jacob. Okay, I'm gonna drop him a little text a room. And no way. Seriously, Camille? Both of you? All three of you. Oh my gosh. This is like the twin task force. They literally follow them everywhere they go. That is wild. And Coral is having some hot daydreaming about Annabelle. Both of them daydreaming about different sims. Apart from one of them is within reach of Blossom. Like she could honestly drop text to either of the two. Whereas Coral, one would just never, like the idea of dropping a text probably terrifies him. But two, he's not gonna text someone that his sister was interested in. That like, just no, hard no. Also Blossom's going through a bit of a stressful time right now. I'm gonna just check on her. She's doing a lot of this uh, business. Thanks for checking on me. I'm just a little bit down Coral. Oh no. Look at him, he's like just watching her now instead of doing his writing because he's like worried that she's feeling a bit down. We're meant to be going to work like again in 43 minutes. So we're gonna do a little writing break, just a little break, just for some more nice quality twin time because I know how much you like guys like twin time. I also like twin time. Oh no, the swings are full. This is rune twin time. How dare you? Oh no, wait, it's Annabelle. It's Annabelle. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. Look at him, he's just like... This is not happening. I am not here. Nothing is happening. I will just stare directly ahead of me and not look at Annabelle at all. Okay, she's given up the swing for uh, Blossom to go on a swing for it. The thing is, like, I feel like literally, if he just said to her, like, I really like Annabelle, it feels like you are more into Jacob. Like, are you more into Annabelle? What's the situation? She would just be like, oh, Annabelle's not really into me. You should just go for it. But he's just not going to do that because he's like, he's too much of a sweet brother. He's just not going to do it. So instead, he's just here being all like crushing on her whilst also being being way too scared to do anything about it. Poor Coral. I did want them while they're out here to do a little Coral makeover because Blossom got one last episode. So I was like, oh, I'll do one for Coral. Oh, look, he wants to go see what's happening. But he's late for work. So I have to send him to work instead. So maybe we'll save his um, little makeover for next episode instead. And instead, Blossom is getting pushed on the swing by Annabelle. Very close to that kid's head, I'm noticing. Very, very close. But yeah, she kind of got a few people eating out the palm of a hand right now. Uh, oh, and no, no, we've been abandoned on the swing. All of the teenagers just left us. Yeah, I should have definitely seen this coming. This is just Annabelle's MO, isn't it? Make me feel like everything's going fine and then just leave me on the swing. She's got the exact same expression that Coral had a minute. Oh, she was there for a second. Had a minute ago, just like... No, that did not just happen, but it did, but it did. Okay, and now I need you to put all of your energy into wishing for a clem promotion. I'm gonna keep like micromanaging her day to try really hard to get her like a promotion at work. Coral wants to eat something really delicious. I thought it said healthily delicious first. I'm like, you ain't getting that in this house. So I'm not getting any gain from working hard. So let's do some intimidations. Nice, nice. Ooh, and when um, Coral got home from work, he got a pen pal from Isla. Paradiso, which kind of sounds like Solani. <gasps> and I got, she came home from work and she didn't get the promotion. No! How did I not get it? Oh, that's super annoying. Oh, I've got another work in 17 hours, but then I don't work again till Wednesday. 
Honestly, finishing off this criminal career is tough. Even just working hard all day just doesn't get you the promotion. Maybe I didn't micromanage enough. Okay, so the teens have three days until they're aged up. I am just gonna play one more day because I really want Clem to get a promotion this episode because I feel like I can't move to Solani until I'm at the top of her career, which is super stressful. So I'm hoping we're gonna be able to do that next episode. With the kids, I'm just gonna get them working on homework and postcards today because uh, the postcards thing is definitely proving quite challenging. They keep getting duplicates and I'm doing it together. I just want to collect one board of postcards and it will count for both of them. And it's just like, we keep getting the same ones, which is really annoying. <gasps> Champs les Sims, that's a new one. Okay, bro. Moonlight Falls, I've already got. Champs les Sims is good though. Okay, kids have been writing their books and pen pals all day, literally all day long. You need to go to work. No more playing with the kitty cats. You've got to get this promotion today, Clem. Look at you. You look the part. You can't just look the part. You've got to talk the talk and walk the walk. Off you go. Now come on, work hard. Oh, and Blossom's PC. That is a replacement job you right there. We've got a pen pal from Dragon Valley. <gasps> Have a sim reach the max in the writing skill. Oh my gosh, do I drill the safe or interrogate the manager? I'm pretty good at my fists, so I feel like I'll do this one for Clem. And who reached level 10? Coral did. Oh no, not a small performance last now. Coral reached level 10 of the writing career, which is amazing. I'm gonna have to get Clem working really hard now. And he just finished his entire book. You finished your book first. <gasps> good job, Coral. You were so behind as well. Good job. And did you get promoted? <gasps> Yes! Clem has been promoted to the brains! She now makes $338 per hour and she can now search for bank blueprints on the computer. What? Your next work day is actually today? Monday? You've got everything you need, you just need to upgrade some objects. <gasps> but yeah, your next work day is today. We could be in Solani next episode. I will get Clem to do the off hours work. We'll work our little butts off. Look at her now. She's crying about her job a little bit, but look at your outfit. Look at you. You. Oh my gosh, you're kind of ruining this moment for me, Clem. But Clem is promoted, which means if we can get all the way to the top the next episode, we're heading our butts to Salami. Salani, not Salami. Clem has finally earned a PhD from the streets as the brains of her own organization. She will plan the big jobs, make the big scores, and bring Bring home the big simoleons. Yes, just one more. Just one more. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I will be doing a, uh, I did intend to do a coral makeover this episode, but didn't end up getting chance to do it. So we'll do that at the beginning of the next episode. I wanted him to like speak to Blossom about like his confidence and maybe she'd give him a little bit of a makeover. So we will have a little bit of twin makeover time at the beginning of the next episode. If you guys are excited, give this video a big cheeky thumbs up and I will see you guys in another video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.